what works for me is just staying me and staying true to what I do, what I know what works for me. So I can't look at somebody else and be like, oh, that's Shonen, let me hop on that too. Right? For me, I'm, I'm, I'm already a chameleon, so I can blend in, in anywhere, really. But once I start becoming like other people or trying to do like that, then I'm, I'm falling out of the box where I need to be. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of BT Talks. I'm Unique and I'm here with Roy Woods. How are you? I'm good, what's up? So I'm excited because I heard recently you became a girl dad. Yes, I did. How's... Girl dad. <laughs> what's that experience been like so far? The best. I love it. Tell Ain't me. nothing like it. So, um, I don't know. I, I, That's just like my little mini me. You know what I'm saying? I, the love that I get from my daughter is unconditionally the best. I, like. I don't know anything that's made me more happy in my recent years than that, having my daughter, you know? Aww. Yeah, man, she's just, her smiles, her, her laughs, her jokes, like, that's me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, damn, like, you really me, like, I love it, you know? She's, the love is just so much different than any other type of love that you would feel. I mean, I feel like if I had a boy, I actually thought I was, I was gonna have a boy. And then the old song came through, like, oh, you having a girl? for this because even mom thought she was getting a boy right so but honestly she, she's still like a little she moves like a little tomboy like she picks up football she likes cars like she's just a little she's a weird kid but i was a weird kid so i get it you know so it's beautiful so how has she helped like impact your life oh, and yeah. your view of how everything works she well i was already on this like path of trying to better myself but she like speeded up the process right so uh, when she came into my life it was more like me having to remind myself like I have to give her a future that I didn't I didn't have the opportunity to have and so and her mom as well right so that's what you know I guess strive for keep striving for every day I mean it's a work in progress but every day I just keep striving to be better and she's she's improved my quality of life the way I think just everything around me is just so much so much better I can I feel like I can breathe a little more so making music doesn't even it doesn't affect me. I can make music happily now because I'm just in a way better space. You're about to drop your album, Mixed Emotions. Yes. And I'm guessing like that whole experience helped contribute to like the songs that are gonna be on this album yes, for they us. Have. But can you speak about more experience and emotions that inspired the tracks on your album? Um, a lot of pain, <laughs> sadness, breakup over fake breakup because of situationships. <laughs> even betrayal. Um, confusion, so many different places where I'm tapping into because those are all the emotions I was feeling. Um, so I share it on this album. I share it all. The, even the little, even my little wild city, city boy side, you get that too. <laughs> so, you know, I, I touch it all. Now, I find it funny that you said a uh, heartbreak during situationships because I feel like you don't hear guys say that a yeah. lot, but you get it from girls. You get it from girls. Like, Mara was broken, but you were never dating him, sis. Uh. So you hear it from a guy. <laughs> I, feel that. <laughs> I, I love it. So, like, what's one track on this album that stands out the most to you? Thought it was you. It's a, it's a song called "Thought It Was You." I, it, uh, I believe it was like for me the beginning of my journey where I was able to write exactly how I felt without having to feel like I need to add, change anything. Like it was just perfect for me. Um, and that song I'm talking, I'm talking about my situation, so it's a situation, a heartbreak. Uh, a little bit betrayal um, uh, and just a realization of my current situation, me and you, it ain't gonna work. That's what I thought it was you, but clearly it's not, you know? So um, that song for me, it, it just stands out. The sound, the sample, the lyrics, the melodies, all was exactly what I wanted to do, wanted to make and show my fans like, yeah, this is the music that I've been always trying to make. This is it. You know, it's not the exit, not we're not done. This is what I've always wanted to make. What did it take for you to evolve to that point? Um, I had to really get down on my craft, to be honest. I really had to do a lot of soul searching um, just to be able to get comfortable enough to, to be vulnerable, which is odd because I'm an artist who gets vulnerable on my tracks easily. But there was a point in time it wasn't easy to do that. And I was scared to even get that vulnerable because all these feelings, all these things I'm going through, these emotions, I don't even understand them. So how am I gonna tell you guys? So I'm just there trying to block a lot of feelings out, just mask it, whatever, but I'm too empathic for that. I can't even do that. So I kind of just had to say, you know what, damn, you just gotta grow up, get through it and feel it all and then deal with it after. So what triggered that man grow up and we're gonna get through this? Like, Cause 
I, that takes a process to get yeah, to. I know. And as I said earlier, I was just trying to better myself already. I was living so fast. I was living dangerous. that I was like, I'm destroying myself. I don't even want to do music anymore. I want to quit now. Um, and this is right after the Drake, the, the Three Amigos tour. So I was like, yeah, I just need to figure out myself. Took a break, got a year for a break. And I was just, I wouldn't, you can't even really call it a year. You know how like an athlete would take a year to like Calvin really, uh, Calvin really just did that. I said, I need to take a break from football, mental health. You can kind of say I did that, but I was just doing drugs, party. <laughs> doing the absolute most, right? And that's what actually led me to be like, yo, you gotta grow up. Cause I looked in the mirror and I said, yo, is this a person that you wanna be for the rest of your life, bro? There's so many different ways that you can go to from here. You gotta figure out what is what do you wanna be in five years? And this is not this wasn't it for me. So then I started making that change. I will say, like, sometimes you gotta go down that dark path to be like, mm, you know what? I'm kinda messing up. Yeah, yeah. Like this isn't Yeah, I gotta I go through the darkness to find the light, right? So what would you say was one of the most vulnerable tracks you've ever written and shared with your fans? I would say, um, one of them would be Menace off of Waking at Dawn. Just based on, I feel like we weren't, a lot of songs weren't even, we weren't even in the toxic world of R&B yet, but that was me showing, I don't want to be a menace because I'm so messed up, right? Um, I feel like that was just a song I get, anytime somebody walks up to me like, oh, yo, that Menace track, yo, I feel it, you know? Compared to a lot of songs, but I or I just like the song, it would make me feel. But when I get the, I feel it, bro. That's how I know I resonated with them. <laughs> you know, so yeah, they're definitely menace for sure. But on this album, I just want to love. It's the last song on the album, so hopefully they get that feeling too. So are you more of a fan of toxic R and B or like the old school sappy love R and B? I mean, I feel like old sappy R and B was a mix of toxicity too. Like, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, huh? <laughs> I mean, but that's all it is, yeah. right? Compared to where you know a man's talking about, yo, I like, I love shorty, I just want to simp it. You know what I'm saying? But it was there, it existed. There was both. I feel like now it's just only we only see one side of it because that's all people are doing, living toxic. Yeah, we're not boohooing and crying on the track no more. Ain't nobody doing that no more, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a little boy. I be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. So I know you already spoke about like one recent uh, situation that you shared and affected your songwriting. Was there ever another romantic situation that did that to you? Oh, most definitely. Pretty much all my romantic situations. Really? <laughs> I write about them, yeah. Profoundly, like, infected you, like, oh my God, I hope yeah. she hears this song. And when she hears it, I hope she knows about her. No, I, I show her before I even drop it. Oh, that's nice. Is it? It is. Okay. Cloud have nice. been petty and it's like, I hope you know this is about you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I no, can I, sing it. So I, I play it in front of them. And I was like, and they're like, I like that song. Or is it about me? And it's just like, yeah. Yeah. Like, it makes them fix up, though. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. <laughs> so I, I read you were inspired by like uh, Michael Jackson and Marvin Gaye. So how yeah. did their influence help you shape you as an artist and how you re like reach your listeners? Uh, is that soul, man? Marvin Gaye just he had that soul in him, and I feel like that's what I wanted to bring out in my music a lot. Just a lot of passion, a lot of soul. He just made it sound so beautiful, the way he told his stories. Um, and I always fell in love with that. And then Michael gave you that aggression, that he gave you that difference, that left field side of music that you could only get from him. And I appreciated that. I didn't even really realize I was taking in all these artists, soaking up all these little qualities from them. I'm just loving their music, right? So um, yeah, no, just Marvin Gaye with that soul and Michael with that different left fieldness aggression. That was just, that was just all me. What works for me is just staying me and staying true to what I do, what I know what works for me. So I can't look at somebody else and be like, oh, that's Shonen, let me hop on that too, right? For me, I'm, I'm, I'm already a chameleon, so I can blend in, in anywhere, really. It's not, it doesn't really matter for me. But once I start becoming like other people or trying to do like that, then I'm, I'm falling out of the box where I need to be. For some people, it may work for them, right? But for me, I wanna, I, I've always, I, mean, I only look at longevity. I'm not here for the short term, right? So I'm gonna just stick to, and I, for me personally, I know I've set trends already. So I'm not looking to go and follow a trend. I'd rather just stay me and, Something will happen, they're gonna follow you, dig? So that's how I go about it. I know you earlier spoke about struggling to like voice your thoughts on paper. Yeah. But did you ever like struggle with who you wanted to be identified as when it came to your artistry? 
most definitely. I feel like I got so many comparisons early on. I always just wanted to just be me, known as me. I don't want to be known as the guy who sounds like this or makes music like that. Like, I want to just be, you know, Roy Woods, I just I read Roy Woods music, he gives me this, that's why I rock with him, you know? Um, but and we, we're going to make comparisons. We live in that day and age, right? So. I got over that home. <laughs> so yeah. what what helped you navigate that? Because I can only imagine coming out if you were saying, "Oh, you sound like this," like, but no, I sound like me. Like, yeah. what helped navigate you being like, you know what? That's what you guys think, but you can't change it. You really, honestly, just can't change it, and that comes with anything else in life. Like, you get, get something you don't want, your rea your reaction is gonna is gonna um, be your your reaction is gonna take you to a direction where is gonna lead to one way or another. Um, and you could either stay mad about it, and you could stay salty about it, and be like, oh, no, I'm tired of everybody calling me The Weeknd or Michael Jackson. Or that, that, that. Like, or I can just embrace it, right? So that's what I chose to do. So we spoke about your healing journey and all that. So what were some positive coping mechanisms that helped you along the way? Well, for me, I love, I had to figure out for me, okay, so what do I even like? What do I even like for myself? Not what everybody likes for me. What do I like? So I had to figure those things out. Uh, I like water. I like I like quiet. I like nature. So I like putting myself in those settings. That's where I feel my peace. Right? Everybody has their own thing. That's that's me though. And then I have to ask myself questions. Like I'm my own therapist. Like, okay, so this pissed you off. Why? Okay, why did you, why did it piss you off? Okay, why did you react like that? Okay, so what are the reasons for you even having these feelings? Why do you even feel like this to react like that? And I just keep crunching down until I figure out. Oh, and it may be hours. I'll talk to myself for hours, but I always have to get down to the root because you can talk to somebody else about it. They'll give you an opinion. They'll give you their opinion. They'll give you their way of fixing it. They'll give you their way. They think that you can get through it. But when you listen to yourself, you know exactly what you need more than anybody else on the outside looking. And I'm not saying nobody, they, they don't care enough to, but nobody knows you better than you. So you got to listen to yourself. Ooh, that was you did a lot of <laughs> in a shadow work right there. A, a lot of soul searching. I did a lot of soul searching, yeah. Being at where you're at now, uh, successfully in your career, as well as like personally, how, what advice would you give your younger self? Cause like you're a completely different person than you were. Yeah, I tell myself stop tripping all the time, man. Cause I overthink too much. <laughs> and I'll just create situations for myself cause I'm overthinking. I just tell myself, shut up, chill out, go make some music and stop being wild, bro. Just control yourself a little bit, you know? I was a wild boy, like really wild, so. I just, uh, I mean, I'm 27, I feel like I'm 37. <laughs> Cause I live like that, you know? Like I, my life is so calm, so simple now. Like there's nothing crazy going on. So, and I like it like that, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like there's a misunderstanding about who you are? Like a misconception that people have about you? Genuinely, no, I don't really let people in too much to even figure that out. Okay. That's honest, that's <laughs> yeah, honest. So I don't, I wouldn't say, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't know. Okay, so yeah. looking ahead, like outside of music, what other aspirations do you have for yourself? Oh man, uh, this I am a businessman, so I want to venture off into a lot of business ideas that I have. I'm just always thinking about what's next, what's next. Like a, like a song, I'm thinking about what the next idea is. So I'm always crunching down on that. Food, I love food. Um, so I'm trying to you know get into you know a little restaurant chain. I think I already own one, but not yet. On the way soon. On the way soon. On the way soon. So. Yeah, we want to get into that. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, I wanted to go to school. Eventually, I will go back to school, but I wanted to go to school for um, culinary, yeah. But I, will, I did want to do psychology, but now I'm changing it. And I think I want to go for the neuroscience. Oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I think I want to learn more a lot about the brain and how exactly how it works. So that's what I think I'm going to get into later on in my years, for sure. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So I love to always ask people this as a last question. Like, what do you want your legacy to be at the end of the day? How I changed and helped people's lives. Uh, how I improved, help improve their quality of life. Um, yeah, I mean, I can live my life and it'll be amazing, but I'm not a selfish person, so I want to see other people flourish and do the things that I can do right now as I speak. I mean, I grew up seeing so many musicians, so many talented people not get that, not get those opportunities, be stuck closing boxes. And in my city, a lot of kids are dying, going to jail because they want to do these things, but. There's only, they're so boxed in, they're so closed in, and they only have a certain limit of where they can go, and then it's back to the streets, it's back to the BS. So, you know, I want to be able to just let people know when I die, when I pass on, people say, yo, no, he, 
he helped out in every way that he could have and he he was he was um a selfless person you know he gave himself wherever he could whenever time energy you know what i'm saying advice whatever it was um, that's the kind of person i am i want that to be remembered See, that's why I tell you traveling is important. <laughs> <laughs> For work, I be traveling, though. You know what I'm saying? For tour, I'm trying to make it happen, you know? A little bit of tour, a little bit of fun. Because the first tours, I just did work. Now, I'm going to try to have some fun, you know? So, any last words before we wrap up? Um, new album, Mixed Emotions, 28. I'm so excited. It's my heart and soul. I got a, a show uh, today, tomorrow. Uh, in Brooklyn, so um, and it's with a live band. It's my first time doing a show with a live band, so I'm gonna be doing that. Back on road soon, tour this fall, so I'm gonna drop dates. And um, yeah, the Roy Woods ain't going nowhere after this. Y'all, y'all gonna get annoyed with me. I promise you that. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate no it. <laughs>